Hello everybody. Today I would like to go over the calculations for the ideal gas law lab flow that we're going to be doing. A little snapshot of what's going to be happening in this lab. The PDF has a good walkthrough of how to actually set it up. And then after the reaction starts taking place, what's going to happen is we're going to have HCl inside of this tube and it's going to start to dissolve this little wad of magnesium right here. And up is going to bubble hydrogen gas, which is going to start to collect at the top of the tube. We're going to have the atmospheric pressure pushing down here. And what that's going to do is going to make it so that this is also at atmospheric pressure. We're going to be able to read off the volume off of the tube of the hydrogen that we collect and we're going to know that this atmospheric pressure uh, due to Dalton's law is partially going to be the hydrogen that we produce and then uh, a small amount of it will be the pressure due to water the vapor pressure coming up off of this water here so we're going to make a little correction for that So the first thing we need to know is going to be the vapor pressure of the water. And this is something that we're going to look up in the experimental PDF in table two. And uh, you're going to use the temperature of the H2 that you were given in your provisional data. The next things are pretty much just a series of conversions. So we're going to convert the volume that's given to us for the H2 from milliliters over to liters. We're going to convert the temperature of the H2 that's given to us from degrees Celsius over to uh, Kelvin. We're going to then calculate the moles of the H2 gas. So our assumption is going to be here that all of the magnesium is ultimately converted to H2 gas. So we're going to say that the moles of H2 are going to be equal to the moles of magnesium we added. And we're going to calculate that by taking the mass of magnesium that was given to us in our provisional data and dividing it by the molecular weight of magnesium, which is 24.31 grams per mole. Next, we need to figure out the pressure of the H2 gas. So we said that the total pressure is going to be our atmospheric pressure. We're going to subtract out the vapor pressure that we looked up in table two. That's going to be our pressure of H2. And since these values were given to us in TOR, we're going to need to multiply by a conversion factor to get units of atmosphere. Next they're going to want us to calculate the experimental value of R in units of liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. To do that we're going to take the pH2 that we just calculated multiplied by the VH2 divided by the N times the TH2 that we calculated um, so we're assuming here that the hydrogen is behaving ideally and we'll, uh, and we can apply the ideal gas law. We're going to do that for two trials. We're going to have an R for trial one. We're going to have an R for trial two. And then we're going to calculate an average by adding the two together and dividing by two. Next, we'll calculate a percent error. So we're going to take our average that we just calculated, subtract out our theoretical R value. We'll have the absolute value of that, so we have a positive, and divide that by our theoretical R value. Multiplying that by 100%, and we'll have our percent error. Finally, we want to figure out what is the limiting reagent is it the HCl or is it the magnesium? Remembering that if magnesium isn't our limiting reagent, then our assumption that all of it was converted to 
uh, H2 wouldn't really be valid, would it? So we will compare the number of moles of HCl by taking the volume of HCl given to us in the experimental PDF times its concentration. And then we will take a look at the moles of magnesium, which we already calculated as the moles of H2. And again, that was the mass of magnesium divided by the molecular weight of the magnesium. The last question asks about trapping a bubble inside of our apparatus. And to think about that, what you would want to think about is the volume here, right? So if we made this a larger number, right, and this goes up, then our numerator will be larger, and that's going to lead to a larger R value.